<laughs> Pray for me. <laughs> and punt. Yeah, we could go on for hours and hours and hours. That's Good morning. An attention getter. Good morning. I'm uh, client number 10. That's client number 11. That's How you client doing? number 12. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony show. Good evening. Phone number 877 <laughs> 212 O N A. Oh, Mr. Bucket. What's your fetish? I love the garlic butter sauce. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. wow. Hey. From client number 13. <laughs> I would get rid of all my male clothes and oh. get only girl clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm trying to use the phone! <laughs> yeah. <Wow>. Whoops. <laughs> uh, oh, that's something. Unbelievable. <laughs> you blundering bag of boots. <sighs> well, for the rest of America, we're waking up this morning. To find out that our uh, governor is a perv. Uh, oh, yeah. goody two shoes. Elliot Spitzer. Oh, goody two shoes. Mr. Uh, we'll, we'll get ethics back into Albany. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of these do gooders, one of these uh, uh, tattletales, as it were. And when he was a prosecutor. Uh, he'd go after all these uh, causes in, in, with this holier-than-thou attitude. And, oopsie, there he is. Client number nine. Client number nine. I don't even know where to begin. I, I, I have never read more than I have in the last 16 hours. I thought it was inappropriate at the press conference when he held up the uh, the picture of McGreevy and said, at least I wasn't putting that in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That wasn't helpful. Oh. Wow. Well, do we start with his statement? What do we? I mean, what do you want to do here? Well, I guess the, the facts, if uh, no one knows by now, but I mean, I'm sure everybody does, maybe in the rest of the country. Yeah. Uh, they need a little filling in. But uh, Elliot Spitzer, governor of uh, New York, state of New York for the past year, I guess. A little over, there, a, year, a, little sure. over a year. Uh, caught in a sting operation for the Emperor's Club, which is a very high price call girl uh, operation. Looked like a great, uh, great operation they had going there. Sure it did. I hear the broads cost about uh, two to three hundred dollars a night. Perhaps more than that, Opie. What is it? Five thousand dollars an hour? It was uh, nice. uh, yeah, up to five thousand dollars. What uh, do you get for five thousand dollars an hour? Just a, a very hot girl. I've never I'm spent assuming. nearly that much money. You get elegance, quote unquote, and you probably get like a penthouse model. Yeah, you're getting top of the line uh, girls that will probably do anything, and uh, maybe a little discretion. But when you're being investigated, it's kind of hard <laughs> to be discreet. He, he I, I think a lot of people, uh, the news is saying he was caught during this sting operation for this uh, prostitution uh, ring. But I think the, the truth of the matter is they were looking into him and stumbled on this pro, uh, prostitution ring. <laughs> right. They were getting a little suspicious uh, with this guy. What was it, his money? There's something about the way his money was moving? They noticed his money was moving around a little bit, so they looked uh, into it a a bit further, and then they discovered this whole prostitution thing. You can't be the governor (laughs) of New York and and do this. You just can't. Really? Someone's going to say something. He's on TV. They're they're hookers. And and they, they come in and go, hey. I'm I'm just a dopey hooker, and even I know you're the governor of New York. Dude, I've been recognized by hookers. <laughs> yeah, have you really? Yes. Of course. Yes. And and there he is, you know, just business as usual. All right. Uh, so he was caught. Um, I guess the records uh, have him as client number nine. From outer space. That's it. From outer space. <laughs> Client nine from outer space. It's going to be a great new movie. I'll, oh, it's fantastic. It's about a governor that has sex on the night before Valentine's Day. 
<laughs> Which is even better. Mr. Romantic. <laughs> Oh, this this guy. I like to take off expensive women's clothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a governor may have sex with a woman like this. <laughs> uh, so he uh, he was client number nine. Yes, from outer space. And uh, he he was uh, uh, he liked what did they say? Um, some things that might be unsafe was that what they said or dangerous? Uh, I believe he was uh, some dangerous behavior. Client nine asked Kristen, uh, the prostitute's uh, quote name, Kristen, yeah. to do things that you might not think were safe. Yes. Now we do have an expert on uh, <laughs> prostitution in the studio. What would that mean, Jimmy? Well, I think that that I did also read somewhere on one of the websites. I believe he would go, like to go bagless, as we say. Uh, yeah. Not, now, now a condom. I don't know if he was asking for condoms to be removed during sex, because sometimes during, uh, let's just say, certain types of sex, uh, so, some girls will ask you to wear one, some won't. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the, if, if they mean he was trying to go unprotected the whole way or just through part of it. I, I think know. for that kind of money, uh, you should be able to um, not have to use any type of protection. Uh, and, and I mean, yeah, maybe utilize an open wound. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Stab her in the side and, and use that. And do what you will with that. <laughs> I mean, that should that should pretty much be uh, for, for the price five grand, right? So, so you're just saying that uh, maybe no condom. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. That would be unsafe they, they behavior. He, he requested that you don't wear condoms. Mm -hmm. he, can't, he cannot wear. Condoms. Oh, we were we were like trying to figure out what that really meant in the office. We're thinking it was you know, yeah, uh, well, at least. Maybe having sex while juggling dynamite <laughs> sounds unsafe. I don't know. Let's lose some bobcats in the room. <laughs> Hungry bobcats. Yeah, get our heart rates up. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Right. That would be unsafe, I would think. Sure. Propped her up on a rickety beehive. <laughs> <laughs> Again, unsafe. <laughs> I almost had a spit take. Wrong... Took the, <laughs> took the wrong opportunity to start drinking coffee there, Jimmy. Kristen, the prostitute, was paid $4,300 in cash for a two-hour session. And what's really interesting, uh, he was going down to Washington uh, for Valentine's Day, basically. He was down there on the 13th. Ah, romantic. Uh, he did it with this chick on the 13th, uh, uh, also part of the 14th, which would be Valentine's Day. Yes. It, it was after midnight. They were actually making a point of that. It's like, well, it was after midnight, technically Valentine's Day. And boy, he wanted this badly because he kept calling, I guess, the, uh, the, the, the company that would send Kristen yeah. to see if they got his payment because he was paying ahead of time to a fake, what, company? Yeah, they had something set up where you didn't have to use a credit card or uh, pay cash with your hands to somebody else. You'd transfer money into another account that was like a company that was set up by this Emperor's Club. It looked like a consulting company. Yeah, and uh, then you'd have an account set up with a balance, and you would uh, use uh, the, their services, right? their hookers. And they would take money out of your account. So he knows he's going down to Washington. He knows he wants to get a prostitute, but his money didn't clear yet. So yeah. he's calling the company like, uh, what's going oh, on? Please. Please tell me what's he was going on. Like whipped up into a froth <laughs> at that point. And this is what's hilarious. The The company said that he had a $400 credit, I believe, four or $500 credit. Not getting much at the Emperor's Club for but, 400 bucks. But th <laughs> they were trying to figure out if that's enough money to at least send the girl. Right. And then figure out business later. And the company decided, who gives a crap, it's the governor, that's not enough money to just send the girl. And then at the last minute, the money cleared, and then uh, it led to the girl showing up at his room, yeah. where the door was uh, unlocked, where she could just push it in and wait for him. And there he was, probably nude <laughs> on the bed. Actually, I think she arrived uh, before he did, unfortunately. Because ah, okay. I was picturing the same thing. It's like, hey, I'm hands behind his head. Hi, how you doing, honey? <laughs> I'm picturing, yeah, she comes into the room and he's waiting for her ass up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> it's uh, just a fantastic story because this guy, like I said, holier than thou and just a tattletale. He, uh, he made it so difficult for radio people to do the most innocent thing, like maybe uh, go see a concert or something. Right. If we want to go see a concert, um, it, it's a whole big thing we got to do now. We can't just grab tickets and go. 
You got to, it's got to go through channels. And this is all because Elliot Spitzer thought that there was misappropriations going on in the radio industry with payola. Yeah, every ticket had to be accounted for. Yeah, every prize has to be accounted for. I want to go to a show here in New York City. I wasn't allowed to get a ticket from the radio station I work for because every ticket had to be accounted for. Uh huh. And they already gave away the uh, the the uh, proper amount of tickets or something like yep. that. So if they gave me a ticket, then there'd be some kind of suspicion. And, and yeah. this was all Elliot Spitzer's doing, huh? And you have to sign for it. And you have to sign for it a yeah. whole. It's just a pain in the ass. He's really made. Made uh, radio a pain in the ass as and far as he was, as far as this type of thing goes. He was involved in a uh, couple of uh, pretty high profile prostitution ring takedowns as prosecutor. So um, just a, a hypocrite. It's another a, one. It's it's like uh, you know I mean I have a mixed feelings on it because as much as I don't like Spitzer, you know I don't like to see a guy's life ruined by some dumb stuff like this because I don't think it should be a. But it's like when you're that sanctimonious man, it's like yeah. Well, you also. It's the line of work. I mean, you, you're absolutely right. If this guy is just uh, some uh, uh, an iron worker or something like that, and he's a shock going jock. out, a shock jock perhaps. Now, if he's just going out and, and doing this, that's, you know, whatever. It should be his business. This is the governor of New York uh, who built a whole platform on how, how holier than thou he is. And, uh, and he's got a, a wife, uh, three daughters. And they showed, they showed pictures of him uh, kissing his wife and his daughters, and all I'm thinking is, oh, where is that mouth? Been? Oh boy, where is that mouth been? Oh boy, for that kind of price, yeah, everything's accessible. Yep. Hey, I don't uh, think uh, it's a you know like a girl off the street. A couple more bullet points. So this uh, this happened at the Mayflower Hotel in D.C. I think we've stayed there. When we do our trips to D.C. Not as much fun as he had them. No uh, kidding. No. <laughs> Hi. No. <laughs> you weren't who I was expecting. <laughs> this is a legendary hotel, too. Uh, Need some company? <laughs> no, Kenny. You uh, look lovely this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> uh, oaf number one. <laughs> I was going to go with dollar, but very good. <laughs> anything. Yeah. You know, anything, me. number, anything. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of Kenny jokes there. Dumb horse just standing there with a bag of oats. <laughs> uh, let's see. Why aren't we on in Buffalo? Uh-oh. What happened? What? What happened? We have huge ratings there. Why? John, what's going on? I don't know. They got some crap music on. It's just uh, I turned you on, and then when you know when I saw you weren't on, I went on the internet and got you on K Rock. But oh wow, must uh, be something with second. the feed. Let me find out through uh, Steve. Uh, but thanks for giving us the heads up. Maybe they're just having a little technical problem. Too Where's bad. client uh, fifteen, Steve? Where yeah. is he? Yeah, we're uh, we're rocking today too because this Elliot Spitzer thing. We need Buffalo to hear this. I like yeah. something a little different. Yes. Thanks, John. <laughs> I was wondering if maybe you could just shave my face and slap it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Emperor's Club. Can you send over an emperor? <laughs> I'm bisexual number nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought this was for penguins. I have a fetish. <laughs> uh, this <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> this Mayfla Mayflower Hotel is legendary. J. Edgar Hoover. Had lunch there every day for 20 years. Mm, but that, some stuff was going on with him. No yeah, kidding. That's Clyde that. Tolson. <laughs> but it's something you probably didn't know. President Franklin D. Uh, Roosevelt, uh, yeah. the famous We Have Nothing to Fear But Fear Itself speech, Ooh. was at that hotel in room mm. 776. Uh, they grilled uh, Monica Lewinsky in that uh, hotel. Yeah. For the Bill Clinton thing. And that's a few a other fine things. hotel. It's sure just a, a few blocks from the White House, by the way. Just a, a, a mere few blocks yeah. from the White House. And I bet you Elliot Spitzer got there because they said he got there after she did. So he probably had a suit on. He probably had that. Just his underarms probably stunk. <laughs> his breath was probably clammy, like dry breath, because he was so excited to get there. Oh, he probably was. He's the governor, so nobody ever tells him when he has spittle breath. <laughs> you want to mint already? Dumpster breath. <laughs> yeah. And he just looks like a creep yeah he looks like a creepy guy yeah, that you could just see just saying filthy things yeah. when is he <laughs> when is he gonna step down uh you wow i don't know you can't fight this one this one you can't fight he no, will no. be stepping down no and uh well i guess th this uh, we don't know what to do with this one there's so much to do we're just organizing here but when he does step down probably as early as this morning uh 
We are going to have a blind black governor here in New York City. Yes. Or from, here uh, in New York State, excuse me. From uh, Harlem. Harlem. Um, What's his name? Uh, <laughs> oh, he's a blues artist. <laughs> what do you call No. Uh, <laughs> call a blind <laughs> Mr. Governor <laughs> Patterson uh, Dave, Dave Patterson, right They uh, had some stock footage of Dave Patterson <laughs> And uh, we we pretty much fell on the floor Because they showed oh, him Oh, were we laughing? They, yeah, he, when he stepped up to the podium It was just stock footage uh, You would think they would clean up his stock footage And help a brother out Oh, no, they wanted to show him looking ridiculous he steps up to the podium where, where he's supposed to bang a gavel. Mm. And um, he's just, his hands are whipping all over the place. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know where the podium is. So his helper, some guy that's next to him, uh, hands him the gavel. and he's, But he didn't show him where the little gavel tapping thing was. You know, that little round coaster looking thing that you tap the gavel on. So he just starts banging the gavel and hits the top of a water glass <laughs> that's next to the thing. It's just, and I'm looking going, this is our governor now. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, the second uh, Spitzer resigns. But wow. Uh, I guess Spitzer thought it looked, uh, it would probably look good to have uh, him as a lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. um, he's uh, had, I guess, uh, an illustrious little career in, in Harlem. Um, his wife apparently didn't like Elliot Spitzer, wasn't voting for him, even though, even though uh, he picked her husband. Oh, she knew something. As lieutenant governor, yeah. She could smell a rat, huh? And, uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Let's say hi to Scott in D.C. Scott, what's up? Hey, boy. Good hey, morning. Good morning, Scott. Hey, the good news is, uh, the governor might be over, uh, for a political career, but he's got a great movie coming out. Uh, I think it's, uh, Mr. Spitzer Goes to Washington. It, right. that, that ha I, you know what? That that stunk, and it was good at the same time. Yeah, that's something <laughs> there. But Watch now, boy. All right, buddy. It was clever. There's a, there's a few Spitzer jokes in there somewhere. Mm. Well, she uh, was a New York girl, too. She wasn't a D.C. girl. He had to, yeah. to tr put her on the train and yeah. the track. Not even the Acela. I, I know. know. Yeah, Just get on a train. What a, what a cheapo. Well, it's that kind of, I wanted to have that money, though, is because it, where she was going. Right. Like, he couldn't do it in New York. He right. could not do this in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Why did just get a Washington girl, though? What are you doing, dude? I, I don't know. She, she took to the, the trip from Penn Station all the way down to D.C. Dude, I could have talked to him and said, look, you just have a massage girl come over. You throw a couple hundred extra. What's the matter with you? He wanted one of these. Th these girls are supposed to be top-notch. Top-notch. Uh, just... They were rated on a system of uh, stars. I guess. Three to seven. Three to seven it? stars. She was this a five? girl was a five star girl. Yeah. Uh, the seven star girls will cost you like fifty five hundred, and uh, they're just supposed to be. How do you get your star? Amazing. Stars? How do you get your stars up? I think you walk in and you're allotted your stars, and that's where it stays right away. Yeah, like nature uh, decides that right off the bat. It and, has and nothing to do with your prowess. No, it's just how you look. I think it's how you look. Well, that would suck for the girls that are three or four. Oh man! And they probably do have ones. They're like, all right, what do you, we do have? We keep them in the back. <laughs> no, they said three to seven. Yeah, but they probably got ones, twos, yeah, ones and twos. But they're like, all right, missing well. a limb or something. Yeah. Uh, wow. But uh, the, and and the the apology he gave, uh, with the wife standing there next to him. Yeah, we'll get into that. Oh, We're just looking. Like she'd been crying the whole night. Oh, she had puffy course. eyes. We'll get into his statement. We'll get into the news stories. We'll get into some of the things he, have, he has said over the years. We'll get into Hillary Clinton's comment, which was a no comment, Lack basically. thereof, Lack. because she can't commit to anything. Lack. Nothing whatsoever. The political coward that she is. Can't stand her. But uh, his name is George Fox. That was the name he used. Yeah. George Fox. George Fox. <laughs> I'm George Fox. That's a and I'm going to f*** the out of you <laughs> george fox the name of his actual friend by the way oh was it really yeah what a wonderful hey guy. good thing <laughs> what to a do. wonderful guy yeah <laughs> just ruined george fox's uh life how right. you do just call me greg hughes hey! i step in hi <laughs> how great is that gonna be someday if, if not, not a member of this show named greg hughes is busted with a tranny somewhere <laughs> <laughs> oh you don't understand i just was, i didn't know what name it was. Just a, it's just the first name that came to my head i right. i don't know what happened right the apology is on page 92 <laughs> in the new york post after being on the cover george fox Oh. All right. Secret agent. <laughs> we are we are certainly pumped up today, so uh, we will uh, take our first break.
re-elect Governor Elliot Spitzer. As governor, he proposed a bill that would legalize same-sex marriage in New York. Hey, hey! As a client of the Emperor's Club, he enjoyed the services of a petite brunette escort named Kristen, who may or may not have electrocuted his with the car battery. Re-elect client number nine for governor. Paid for by the Opie and Anthony Show. Elliot Spitzer. Tough on crime. Tougher on the coochie. It's the Elliot Spitzer Guide to Infidelity, Chapter 2, Financing Your Encounter. As Governor Spitzer will tell you, a high-quality prostitute will cost you big. Now, 20 bucks for a is a fair rate if you're going to a homeless man behind a New York City deli. But if you want an attractive young woman to put her tongue anywhere near your you're going to be spending thousands, upwards of $4,000 per encounter. And that's not exactly pocket change. So, learn to carry a meatloaf-sized stack of hundreds with you if you plan on getting laid a lot. Stay tuned for more of Elliot Spitzer's Guide to Infidelity, only on the Opie and Anthony Show. That's, is that the... Was that supposed to be the hundreds? Yeah, yeah, uh, flipping. flipping. Or you justifiably cutting your own throat. <laughs> <laughs> Re-elect Governor Elliot Spitzer. As Attorney General, he was instrumental in building cases against the unethical practices of many brokerage firms in the state. As client number nine, he enjoyed having only the finest fruits and vegetables pounded into his by high-priced escorts. Re-elect client number nine for Governor. Paid for by the Opie and Anthony Show. Re-elect Governor Elliot Spitzer. As Attorney General, he exposed record companies that paid millions of dollars each year to get music stations to add songs to their playlists. As client number nine, he exposed himself to high-priced escorts who would point and laugh at his cashew-shaped genitals. <laughs> Re-elect client number nine for governor. Paid for by the Opie and Anthony Show. Re-elect Governor Elliot Spitzer. As Attorney General, he exposed record companies that paid millions of dollars each year to get music stations to add songs to their playlists. As client number nine, he exposed himself to high-priced escorts who would point and laugh at his cashew-shaped genitals. <laughs>